We can now get notified when changes are made to our Google Docs, and we can add summaries to them. My favorite story for today, though, Canva has added a super useful collaborative whiteboard mode. Also, Microsoft has made some awesome updates to how Reflect operates in Microsoft Teams. And unfortunately, I've got some sad news about one of the most innovative EdTech tools of the last two decades. Welcome in episode 10 of the EdTech News Brief. I'm your host, Jake Miller. This is the show where, as the title says, I tell you about the EdTech News and I keep it brief. And by brief, I mean clear, concise, and just what you need to know. Nothing more, nothing less. This is episode 10. It's September 6th, and I've got some EdTech News to share with you. My goodness, why am I so bad at getting episodes to you in a timely manner? In the last episode, I said I tried to get out two episodes that week, and instead that second episode took me three weeks to get to you. I guess I'm bad at estimating when I'll get these things to you. It's kind of like when I tell my wife I'll be home in 10 minutes, and then 20 minutes later I come walking through the door. I I think a lot of you are nodding your head in agreement and understanding exactly what I'm saying to you. But oof, I'm sorry I didn't get those episodes to you faster. These episodes take more time than you'd think and more time than I thought they would. After all, I've got to research the EdTech news and sometimes I've got to dig in there what's free, what's paid, and it's a lot of research, but it's worth it. It's informing me and I sure hope it's informing you. I feel good about getting this info to you so that you don't have to track it down yourself. I'll keep striving to do it as quickly as I can, but as you can tell, weekly is my goal and I'll just do the best I can. Subscribe or follow so you don't miss anything. Let's start with some news from Google. Need to know as soon as someone adds something to the meeting agenda? Eagerly awaiting a student starting their first draft of an overdue paper? Want to keep a watchful eye on a super important doc? Well, Google now has a new feature that can help you. You can choose to be notified via email if a file is edited. And it's on a per file basis, meaning you could have this setting on for your staff luncheon list to find out what's gonna be for lunch, but off for your assessment schedule doc where you're not super worried about assessments getting added to the schedule. I don't know, those are just examples, but you could have some files on and some files off. The email that you receive will tell you the what, when, and who of any changes that were made. You could set them from within the doc by clicking tools, then notification settings, or you can access it by clicking the comments button in the top right and then the bell. Once you're in there, you could choose to be notified of all comments, no comments, or just comments that tag you. Now that's always been there, being notified of comments. The major news here, the new feature, is that you could choose to be notified about added or removed content. You can't break it down any deeper than that, but if something's added or removed, you'll get notified of it. You'll also see these same options in your Gmail when you receive a notification about a doc, including the ones that we've been receiving for years about comments. So you get that notification about the comment, you can go in there and say, I'd also like to be notified of any edits to the doc. So now there's that notifications drop down with those additional settings. This is available on all Google accounts and should already be live by the time this airs. Back in the day when I was a technology integration specialist for a middle school, I had to manage all of the Chromebooks that went to all of our students in the building. And it was easy at first when you gave everybody a Chromebook, but then slowly but surely kids had to start swapping out Chromebooks because one wasn't working, one had to go in for repairs, one got dropped, one got lost. And by the second week of school, let alone the end of the school year, it was really hard to keep track of who had what Chromebook and when we had given them new ones and when they went out for repair and when they came back and whether we gave them back to the kid, it was a mess. If you your school has a Chromebook one-to-one program and you're struggling with managing your district's IT assets, whether it's Chromebooks or otherwise, in a spreadsheet like I used to do, then you're going to want to check out today's sponsor. If you're tasked with managing hundreds of Chromebooks or other IT assets like projectors and smart boards, you'll also want to listen to this about today's sponsor. Visor is a Chromebook and IT asset management solution designed specifically for school districts. Visor seamlessly integrates with the Google Admin Console and your student information system. With Visor, you can easily see which student has which Chromebook, manage repairs, and even automate disabling lost or stolen devices while notifying parents all in one click. To find out more and lock in up to 20% off, go to visor.cloud slash jake. That's V-I-Z-O-R dot cloud slash jake. Or click the link in the show notes. 
Wait, what's this Google Doc for? Earlier this year, Google added the ability to type up your own summary for your doc in the left sidebar where the doc outline appears. The outlines have been there for quite a while and they're auto-generated by your use of headings, titles, and subtitles, and other items within your doc. But the summary is something that you type in manually right above that outline. There doesn't appear to be a limit for how long your summary can be, but you're unable to do any formatting with it. So you can't do, make things bold or italicized or underlined in there. You can, however, use shift and enter to add line breaks though. This summary will appear in that left sidebar for all viewers, and it also shows up in other places like the details pane that you could see in Google Docs or Google Drive, or in the email that you receive when someone shares a document with you. That's a nice way to tell people what the doc is before they open it. This feature is available in all Google accounts and should already be active in yours. All right, Canva lovers, I've got more Canva news for you this week. In the top menu in Canva, you'll notice a new option, and it's an awesome one, whiteboards. They're like padlets without rules, Google Jamboards with more tools. They're like physical whiteboards, but without having to figure out how to get more than three people around the board. Collaborators can now add shapes, images, videos, uploaded files, sticky notes, of course, sticky notes, and stickers and voting graphics, which really are just stickers that look like thumbs up or thumbs down or plus one or I agree, whatever. But anyhow, you could add those for voting in your board. You can also add content from Canva's library of 100 million images. 100 million? <laughs> I took that off their website. That's true, 100 million, that's crazy. 100 million images, videos, and audio tracks into these collaborative spaces. I also how love how easy flowcharts are to make in here. Add a shape, click a plus button on either of the four sides of it, and a new shape is automatically connected with a new line. But that's not all because these boards aren't just blank canvases. I mean, this is Canva, right? They've also got templates. And of course, they're beautiful templates. As soon as you've got them ready to go in whiteboard mode, just share with specific collaborators or students and they can jump in and add to the board. And notice you can also use different areas of the board. They have limitless boundaries. So you could have one activity going on in the center and then move over to the right for another activity. When you add those specific collaborators or students, they could jump in and add to the board or just jump in and watch because you could choose to let them edit comment, or view. You can also just set it so that anyone with the link can access the board. Great for a professional development or something like that. Since commenting and emoji reactions already work in Canva, they work here as well. And I love how visually appealing the interface that shows us where our collaborators are is. No more blinking brown line like we see in Google Docs. Here we get colorful cursors that move around the screen and we can even see where their cursor's going, not just where they're actively doing things. Now, you don't have to start with a whiteboard project to use the whiteboard feature. You can also be in a presentation and turn it into a whiteboard with just a few clicks. Just right click on a slide and click expand to whiteboard. And with this new level of collaboration, they had to put something in there to control the chaos, a timer. So we can now keep our meetings, presentations, activities, and lessons flowing on time. Just access that timer down in the bottom left corner of your whiteboard. Finally, just like most other stuff in Canva, your whiteboards can have multiple pages. Of course, you could just move all around the limitless boundaries within one page, but maybe you need a new clean page to work in to get everybody on the same page. Get it? You've got that option. After your whiteboard sessions wrap up, you can send them out as a link or even download them to reflect on later. Download a PDF and send it to everybody or an image of it, whatever you want. Just highlight the things you want to export and click download and you'll get some options. Canva whiteboards is available in all Canva accounts, free ones that you might have on your personal accounts, as well as the free school accounts that you have as a teacher and or as a student. The only limitations if you're not on one of those school accounts is that you might not be able to add in all of the images and things like that, you know, the pro stuff, but on school accounts, you should be able to add anything you want onto that Canva whiteboard. Support for this episode also comes from my friends at Pear Deck. One of the reasons I love Pear Deck, that's you, Perry, <laughs> is because it was founded by educators who have designed the products to support instructional best practices known to improve student outcomes. 
Pear Deck gives teachers real-time insights into student thinking and understanding so that they can react as necessary and seize teachable moments. Better yet, Pear Deck's seamless integration with Google Sites and Microsoft PowerPoint make it easy to build interactive presentations that generate 100% student engagement. Great news. Pear Deck is offering all of today's listeners 90 days of Pear Deck premium access for free. Just visit PearDeck.com slash edtechnews. That's www.pearDeck.com slash edtechnews to get started. In addition to that, Pear Deck is giving away one year of Pear Deck premium access and a swag kit to one lucky EdTech News Brief listener. To win, just take these five steps. What are the five steps? Oh, Perry, I'm going to tell you what the five steps are. The five steps. Number one, access this episode in YouTube. Number two, like this episode. Number three, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Number four, click the notifications bell. And finally, number five, comment on this video. Your comment can be about anything. It could be about Pear Deck. It could be about the Google stuff we talked about, the Canva stuff we talked about, the things we're going to talk about later in this. It could even be you telling me what the meaning of my shirt is if you've figured it out. So your comment could be anything. Well, anything nice, relevant, and appropriate, that is. Do that, and you'll be entered to win. I'll pick winners sometime after the next episode airs. So if there's another episode out, it's too late to enter. Again, number one, access this on YouTube. Number two, like the episode. Number three, subscribe to my channel. Number four, click the notifications bell. And finally, five, comment on this video. I shared a while back about the cool SEL feature Microsoft added called Reflect. Well, back in August, they launched an update making Reflect a featured tab in each of your Microsoft Teams classes. Just like assignments or grades, it's right there, Reflect. As the teacher, you can go in there to see your students' responses from throughout the school year with a handy dandy bar graph summarizing the check-in results. Then you could use it to post new check-ins, including adding some custom questions. And when you post them, you also have the option of letting students see their classmates' answers, anonymously of course, or not see their classmates' answers, up to you. Then you could pick where the check-in is posted to, which is nice since different teachers have different organization strategies and teams. And you can even preview the student view, which is always a nice feature in EdTech tools, knowing what your students are going to see when you post something. One thing I love about Reflect in Teams, by the way, is how it allows you to get a more specific idea of how your student is feeling. For example, with Pear Deck, one of my other favorite tools, it asks the kids at the beginning of the lesson, smiley face, frowny face, or in between face, and I always made an effort to reach out to those students who gave me a frowny face. Sometimes I'd ask them, is everything okay? And they'd say, yeah, I'm just tired. Right? That's not something for concern normally. So it's nice here that in Teams, you can get a more specific adjective for how they're feeling and know just how concerning it is. Your students can also see a summary of how the class responded, which I think is nice for normalizing a variety of feelings. You know, years ago, people had to remind each other, it's okay to not be okay. I think this goes one step further and gives proof that there are more classmates going through stuff than may meet the eye. I think that's good for our students to see that happening around them. In the teacher view, I love the ability to filter the responses so that you can see which students you may need to follow up with. And finally, there's a really cool together view that shows your class as a set of feelings monsters. I love the feelings monsters, but it shows your class as a set of feeling monsters to give you a quick visual of how everyone is doing. And a big thumbs up from me on the ability to notice trends in students' feelings, both individually and as a class. Reflect and Reflect in Microsoft Teams is a free app and according to their site meets national, regional, and industry-specific regulations for data collection and use, including GDPR and the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, that protects the privacy of students' educational records. I wanted to make sure I pointed that out because when we're talking about students expressing how they're feeling, we certainly want to make sure those things are private and Microsoft is following GDPR and FERPA in regards to that information. Hey, don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, click the thumbs up to tell me thanks and ring that subscribe bell. If you're listening to the podcast, don't forget to follow the show or subscribe if that's what your app says. And if you have a moment, submit a review. 
just before celebrating its 14th birthday, it was announced that Edmodo is being dissolved. On September 22nd, a little over 14 years after it came out, Edmodo will be no more. The educational technology platform and learning management system was one of the earliest on the scene and one of the most innovative and influential things out there at the time. The statement on their site says, after more than a decade of ensuring Edmodo can stay a free tool for all, we have found that it is no longer viable for us to maintain the level of service you deserve and that we could take pride in ourselves. As a result, we have made the difficult decision to shut down Edmodo.com. So on September 22nd, 2022, all accounts, personal data, and any material you have created within your account will be permanently deleted. So if you've got anything in there, you better go get it. It is possible to download your information and there are directions on their end of life FAQ page for how to do it efficiently. Because after September 22nd, there is no tracking it down. And they say in no uncertain terms in the post that they will not be able to get it back from you after that date. Before we wrap up the show, I've got a handful of new things for you to check out. First, I was recently interviewed for a blog post on the GoGuardian page, and the post is titled, What Makes a Great EdTech Tool? Are you surprised that I was able to mention Ramen Noodle, Oregon Trail, and burritos in this interview? <laughs> no? <laughs> I didn't think so. I'll put a link to the post in the notes. Next up, I'll be part of this year's Pear Fair. Pear Fair is a free virtual professional development from Pear Deck. It takes place on September 14th, and a link is in the notes. Finally, on that very same day, I'll be on Carrie Bauckham and Dr. Mandy Tolan's Doodle and Chat live stream. We'll chat, we'll doodle, and I'm certain we'll laugh. You should mark it on your calendar to join me. Link again in the show notes. As always, I love answering questions from the audience. If there's something you'd like clarified or researched or anything like that, please do feel free to reach out. Here's one that I received a while back. This person said, I liked your YouTube show a lot. For the Microsoft reading tutoring features, I wanted to know which LMS users would have access to these tools. Is this a school subscription with the LMS or a separate product? So I'm guessing you're referring to Microsoft reading coach. You said tutoring, I assume they meant coach. Uh, but I'll answer this for both reading coach and reading progress, which go together just in case. First, reading progress is a free app in Microsoft Teams for Education. And Microsoft Teams for Education is free for teachers and students. So you'll have to set up Microsoft Teams for you and your students, but that's free. Teams is kind of like an LMS, a learning management system, but that's really an oversimplification of what it is. But again, you'll need to have Microsoft Teams to have reading progress, but they're both free. Reading Coach, the one I'm guessing, guessing this questioner was actually referring to, is a free add-on to Reading Progress. So to use it, you'll need to have Microsoft Teams, which is free, and then use Reading Progress within it, which is free, and then you could tap into Reading Coach, which is free. The report does say that it's also built into the Immersive Reader on some sites. I'm not sure what sites those are. I've poked around a little bit and haven't found it on any of the things I've gone to. But if you find a site that has some good reading passages, you may be able to have your students use the Reading Coach there. There won't be any of the data tracking powers that we like in the, the regular reading coach, but still, they could use it there. So I don't know if that answers your question. Is They said, is it a, a school subscription with the LMS? Well, no, but you need to use the LMS for it. Or is it a separate project product? I'd say, no, it's not separate. It's built within the Microsoft Teams LMS. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Got one? Send it to me, jakemillertech at gmail.com or a message on any social media platform or speakpipe.com slash edu duct tape. Sorry, it's the name of my other podcast. I'm always happy to help you out, so please do share those questions with me. And finally, the way that I cap off every episode is with a dad joke straight from the world's greatest dad jokes, the complete collection, over 500 cringeworthy puns and one-liners book. Here it is for today. Did you hear about the new corduroy pillows? They're making headlines. <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's episode. It might not make any headlines, <laughs> but I think it was pretty good. I hope to be back again next week, and I really hope that you will be back too. I'd really appreciate it if you do those awesome things like rating or reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts, liking or subscribing to the show on YouTube, following the podcast in your favorite app, and of course, sharing this episode with the other educators in your life. Have a great day, everyone.